Hello all and welcome to the latest Craft Mania Sunday Showcase. Today I have a brand new product that I'm going to share with you. We're going to be looking at pixie powders. Now if you haven't heard of these before, they're like a concentrated multicoloured mica powder, which is quite a mouthful to say on its own. Um, but there's loads and loads of techniques I've got to share with you on these. A lot of them, in fairness, as I show you, you're going to be wondering what I'm on about because they look a bit of a mess. But I promise you, that when I show you the cards in a little while, hopefully you'll really like them. And a lot of it sort of comes together in the end. So um, bear with me, uh, but we'll talk about the techniques you can do with them. And I have a feeling you're going to really like these. So do stick with it. Don't run away. So the first thing we're going to do is take a piece of just ordinary card. This is our normal, uh, slightly rough card. You get 50 sheets for 4 99 100 sheets for £9. And I'm going to start off by showing you how the company promotes these, the people that we purchase them from. This is how they recommend you use them. I've come up with a bit of a different way that I personally prefer them, but I'm going to show you how they say to use them first of all. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take an ordinary water spritzer bottle and we're going to cover the card in water. Now, of course, you could do this with watercolour card if you wish to. Uh, that will give you a different effect. A lot of it will depend on the card you're using and how much water you apply and how much of the pixie powders you then add to it. With the bottles, they have an ultra fine nozzle on the top of them. So we're going to start off today with candy pink. I actually have eight colours that you'll get to see throughout this video. Now, again, when you come to actually apply this, they recommend you hold it and just tap the top of the bottle. Now, as this lands on top of the water, you should see it start to react and formulate out a bit like a firework, if that makes sense. Now, as you can see, the card is bowing. That is quite normal. That's just because we've made it wet. Uh, that's quite standard. You could weigh it down if you didn't want it to. A lot of people say that's quite a nice thing because it then gives you the run marks in it uh, that you'll create via your patterns if you like as you add your powders to it and you can as you can see i'm mixing my colors so this one is now peacock green and then we're going to add a little bit of gold to it too so this is rich gold now as i say this isn't necessarily my favorite way to use these if i'm being brutally honest it reminds me a bit of artwork as i did as a child um, and it's not really my cup of tea but as I said, stick with me. I have different things to show you and I think you might like them more if this isn't your thing. If you don't feel it's reacted enough or you've got clumps of powder, just spritz more water to it and you will see it run a bit more. And as I say, you could just leave that now and that will dry. Now, of course, this is a really good way to make up backgrounds or you could, of course, die cut these after you've created them. In very true blue piece of fashion, I have lots of these dried that I'm going to show you and you'll get to see some of the other colours. So what I'm going to do actually is run you through the colours I'm showing you today. That would probably be a good idea so you can then see them on these samples. So from this side we have Scarlet Mist, Aqua Lagoon, Purple Violet, Emerald Green, Peacock Green, Silver Dream, Rich Gold and the Candy Pink I was using a minute ago. How on earth are you going to pick between all these? I don't know. So I think it's going to be one of them products you're going to want quite a few of because of the more you mix them and things, the, the better the effect is, I feel. So this is one where I've been a little more full on with my colours. So you can see in here you've got the Candy Pinks, the Emerald Greens, the Aquas and of course we've got the Gold splattered in there too. And that's starting to look quite pretty. I quite like that. As I say, I, I'm not as sold on just the plain white, but I did quite like that one. And I could see some really nice die-cut flowers coming out of that if I wanted to. This one has got the purple in it, which is the purple violet, uh, the candy pink, the scarlet mist, and the silver, just to give you an idea. This one, we've just gone for the purple violet and the rich gold, which is quite nice. I do quite like that one too. And then this one, again, has got a bit more of a mix. We've got the purples, the pinks, and the silvers going on in that one. And we're getting a bit more of a filled in background here. Which this sort of took me on to my next feeling really. The bit I didn't like about it was the fact it had the white background to it. So another thing we can actually do with these is we can use them as a paint. So let's start off with this peacock green one. And I'm just going to tap some out into a little palette. Now you don't have to worry if you get too much out of the bottle at this stage. A, because the bottles are jam-packed. I know it's really hard to see because it's a white powder in a clear bottle. But these are literally jam-packed when you get them new. 
I've used quite a bit of mine because I've made absolutely hundreds of things. And you can still see that it's only just there on the bottle. So I've only used that much and I've really gone to town with these. So I've got all of that to go, which is incredible value, really. If you do pop them into a little palette and you feel you've got too much, which is what I was going on about, don't worry because it will just dry in the palette. It literally, it will dry where it is. And then whenever you wish to, months down the line, you can come back and reactivate it with more water and it will just go back to a liquid form and you can paint with it again. So there's no waste with these. So the way I liked with them is if you just brush them over as a background, so you're sort of creating a wash with them, and then we build up our colours on the top. So I won't do too much of this. But if we just do a little bit of this. Build up your background. And then take the other colours and lay them on top. I felt it gave more of a completed background. Now of course if you're thinking well why didn't you just use coloured card. You could of course do that. But it's already made my card wet by doing this. So if we act quick enough that will already be ready for me to add my next layers onto it. And if they don't spark off enough and they just sit there, don't worry, we'll spritz them anyway. I've just added peacock green to the top of that, so it's a bit more green, which is still good because even if you're layering the same colours, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to take a bit of purple violet and sprinkle that over the top as well. And then I must admit, if you are going to go for these, I'd highly recommend going for the gold or the silver or both, just because I think they give you a really nice added pearlescent feel when they're in them although all of the powders are metallic the gold and the silver can be mixed in as well with the paints so if you wanted to like this green let's do that while we're here and we've got some we'll add a little bit of the gold in there too because of course you can mix these so if you're thinking all well you know limited on colors these eight are sort of could create endless combinations so we've mixed a bit of that in there and i'll just do you a line over here with that so hopefully you can see we now have a more golden metallic feel to that colour. Might show up a bit more when it's dried, but it does have a golden hue to it. And then anyway, back to where we were. We'll just spritz this with some water. And then hopefully you're seeing now, again, it's got that sort of background colour to it. And then the new colours on top. And I preferred this. I felt this had got more use to it for me. I was thinking more silhouettes and fairies and... Uh, butterflies bits like that could be put on there quite nicely so again i have in true blue peter fashion some of them already dried for you to have a little look at so we'll pop that to one side and here's a few more of our ready created ones so in this one you can see i've already painted the background of the aqua lagoon and then on the top we've got some of the peacock green some of the emerald green uh, we've got the rich gold in here and then some of the candy pink too this one's more of just the pink one, so I've painted the background to begin with with Scarlet Mist, then gone over the top of Candy Pink and the Rich Gold. This one's one of my favourites, I really like this. I, it reminds me of something, but I can't quite put my finger on what. But it's um, obviously got the greens in the backgrounds, the Candy Pinks and the Golds in that one, and a little bit of the Scarlet Mist, which is quite nice if you use that with the Candy Pink, then you get the two tones of pink coming on. This one again has got a bit more of the purple violet in it and we've got a little bit of the green, a little bit of the gold, a little bit of the pink and a little bit of the silver. Then we've got the green and the gold on a more pinky background, so that would be the scarlet mist one at the back. And then as you can see there's just so many different variations for these. So I'll speed up a little bit so you don't get too bored of looking at bits of card that I've attacked. And you really do have to bear in mind that these are going to be perfect for your backgrounds or for your die cutting if you want some really nice textured flowers. That one's quite nice, isn't it? It's quite bright, quite vibrant. Again, this is one of the good things with these. It's down to how much of the powder you want to add to what colour scheme you're going to end up with. And every time you do it, you're going to get a little unique twist on it. It's never going to be the same. And another thing I quite like with these, I'm going to show you actually how to do that. If you don't like the randomness of that, but you do quite like the idea of making your own backgrounds. Another one of the things I come up with that I quite like doing was if you just take um, your colours and you stack a little pile of them, just sort of squeeze the bottle a little bit and spread out the dots. And that was with the candy pink. So we'll do something that's really going to contrast. We'll do the peacock green and we'll just stick some of this in between them colours. And then if you get a wet paintbrush again, and just drag these colours, oh that's a bit dirty, but it'll still work. If you just drag your colours down the sheet, 
again I've got one of these dried so don't panic if you think I've lost the plot I can show you a completed one my reg possibly could have done with being a bit more but just keep picking up some water and you can just blend this however you wish to and if you want to you could of course do the reaction bit on top as well and if you want to go back and sort of merge your lines you can see the more water you apply the lighter the colours are going to go and you can make up more of a streaky background is what I'm trying to show you more of a blended background just by playing about with them a little bit to get this this somehow for some reason reminds me of sticks of rock um, could just be that I'm getting hungry but it does sweet shop idea going on there so anyway hopefully now you can see that they do blend quite nicely and when it's dried that's the effect you're going to end up with so again it's just a different way in which you can use these to create a different style of background so let's pop that one over out of the way this one again i'm not going to show you how to do this because it's really simple this is just one where i've built up the colors and i've spritzed i sort of tapped the powder out and ended up with little piles all over it and instead of having the little stacks of it i've just taken a paintbrush wet again and just rubbed it through it and that's given me that sort of ingrained look to it so you've got a bit of a texture and a little bit of a line going through them and mix the colors in for me so again, lots of different colours in that one, pretty much all eight in here, uh, but it just gives you a different finish to it. So if you've seen that and you're thinking, well, I don't know, I'm not too sure, I'm going to show you something different. So this time I'm going to take a piece of acetate, and um, let's clean that off just a bit so it doesn't attack my acetate. Let me get rid of that for a moment and pop our acetate down. Now this is something different we can do. And we're going to be using a product that was on one of our Sunday showcases a little while ago. So we're going to be looking at texture paste. Now if you didn't see the video for this one, it comes in lots of different colours as you can see along here. It's only £5.99 a pot and there's loads you can do with these. But this is one of my favourite techniques with the pixie powders. As if you take your texture paste... And I've just got an ordinary clear stencil. This one's one that we sell in store. It's only £3.99, so it's not too expensive. And it's a large 8x8 one. And all we're going to do is just apply the texture paste through the top of it onto a sheet of acetate. Now, it's quite important here that we try and get these as level as we can. By that, I mean I don't want any dips like this in it because they will show up. So if you do apply it with, like, I've got just a, a plain plastic card, try to use the side of it, not the tip of it, so you don't indent it. Instead, we're going to pull through it, if that makes sense. And I won't do too much of this, because you don't need to see the whole thing complete, but we'll try and patch them bits up. And I quite like this. I think you might like this one. So we'll leave that there. That should be enough to give you an idea, and we'll get rid of that for just a second. This, of course, is the gold colour of the texture paste we're using. And then again with these, you can just apply this over the top. So we're just going to shake it this time, because I want more of it. You'll learn different techniques on how to use these. But as you can see, because I want a more filled in effect, I'm literally shaking the bottle instead of the tap. You can even squidge the bottles. But if you squidge the bottles, then it's, you've got less control. It just fires out quite a load. So this is Peacock Green. I've just done as my first level. And then let's go for Purple Violet. And then although we're using gold texture paste, because it's a different shade of gold, we're going to add in some gold too. Now there's no rhyme or rhythm here with how many colours you need to add. It's more what colours you want to layer on top of it. So if you're thinking of Christmas for instance, you might want to have gone for more of the gold and the scarlet with possibly the emerald green. Um, or of course if you wanted to do it more every day or birthdays. It depends what you think you're going to layer on top of it, doesn't it? So this is now a little bit of Aqua Lagoon on the top of that one. And now, again, although we're working on texture paste, we're just going to spritz it with water. And you'll see them colours react. Now, the texture paste is, of course, wet. So that's what's going to hold our pixie powders in place. And then the water is just making them react on top of it. So again, at the moment, it looks like a complete mess. I am aware of this. You would normally leave this just a couple of minutes, but I don't want to bore you with that. So I'm going to remove this. And if it leaks in between, because it is running wet water don't panic that's fine you can remove it and if you have anywhere where the texture paste has squidged through and you didn't want it i actually seem to have got away quite unharmed this time but if you do just use a um, cotton earbud and you can actually just wipe it off quite easily it will remove it uh, this is your texture paste i'm trying to get rid of if you've got any of the bits of the pixie powder gone through 
don't panic, let it dry, and then at a later date, you can just wet the end of your earbud and just wipe them off from the middles of them. It's not a problem at all. Now, obviously, on top of our stencil, we have all of that lovely pixie powder, and we even have a little bit of texture paste, and it's all ready to go. So if you want to, you can take this, pop it down on top of a sheet of card, apply a bit of pressure, and you will end up with that as a background. So there's nothing wasted again with this. If you do want to use that to make a different background, you can. But this is the bit I want. This is the bit I like. This is your acetate that's just decorated now with these lovely little pendants with all this glistening bit in the middle of them. And I know, again, at this stage, it might look a bit strange, but when we get to showing you the cards and you can see these once they're dry, they look really lovely and like a stained glass effect. Of course, a lot of it will depend on the colour of texture paste you use. So where I've got gold on this one, on some of the ones I'm going to show you in a little while, I've got a blue version and a silver version as well. So that'll be a different effect, obviously, just down to the colour. So I'll pop that to one side and I'll show you a different idea. Now, when I was told about this product, the actual sales rep recommended that we did that with the texture paste. And I loved that idea and I thought it was a really clever one. But I got thinking that not everyone's got texture paste. And obviously, if you're going to use texture paste, you're going to go for a stencil and things like that. You might not want to, but if the product can be used on acetate, then there are other ways in which we could use it. So I've just got a little square or a little rectangle of acetate here. And I'm just going to take my paintbrush again. I'm just going to dry it off. We don't actually need it wet for this bit. And I'm going to take some PVA glue. Now, this is just an ordinary PVA glue. It's one we sell in store. It dries clear, which is the vital bit of this. Um, but that that is really the best part. We also do a fast drying one, which would be good for this technique too. So you don't have to wait too long for it to set. And I'm just going to paint over the top of my acetate with this again. So we're just going to go over that bit there. And then again, you can take your pixie powders and the glue will now act as our holder because we're working on acetate, nothing or this wouldn't normally set on acetate. But because of the glues there, we can just apply our colours again. So this time I've got purple violet and then we're going to go for some silver because I don't think we've used that one yet, have we? So let's add in some silver. Let's be a bit more liberal with that one. And then we're going to go for the peacock green. I think peacock green is my favourite, if I'm honest. I love that one. Um, but I think you'll develop your own favourites. As you, The more you use them, the more you're going to develop your own favourites and come fall in love with them. And then we'll use a little bit of enchanted green because that goes in quite well with this sort of colour scheme. And then when you feel you've got enough colours on there, you've probably got the idea by now, we just spritz with some water. Now, I've chosen a thick acetate for this. In store, we do two different types of acetate. We do a thick acetate and we do a thin acetate. Now, I've purposely chosen the thick acetate for this example, and I'm going to show you why. If you heat our thick acetate, it will warp and it will shape itself. Now, you would normally leave this a couple of minutes because at the moment there's a lot of water in here and it's going to be a bit mucky and a bit blurry. But it's okay, it will still work. But if you do do this at home, leave it a couple of moments, let the excess water dry off, and then just heat the acetate with your gun. Now this will take a minute or two, but we'll start to see it shape in a moment. We could actually take a little bit of that off. Let's drip a little bit off here. Now the reason I want the acetate to melt is as it does this, it will dry our powders in place. You don't have to dry it, you can just leave it. If, by the way, if you're thinking, oh, well, I don't want to have to heat it, you don't have to heat it, you can just dry it, especially if you use the thin acetate, because that will just do it on its own. But hopefully now you're starting to see the acetate move a little as it's drying and we're melting it, quite honestly which is what I'm after doing. You dry it a little bit on the other side. Don't worry that it's warping. If you're worried that it's warping too much, then of course you can flatten it out with a booklet or something like that. But more what I'm trying to get to show you is that once you've done that, here we go, it's starting to get there. 
it will actually form little pits on it and um, shape it so it looks a bit like glass. I hope you can see that. You might not be able to. But it's all sort of textured and pitty and actually looks like a glass pendant or that style of effect. And it's just because of the acetate's melted and it's formed around the puddles of water that we've got on there and the different thicknesses of the mica powder to give you that sort of textured look. And I have a bigger sheet of this that I've already done. And I wanted to show you this one. Again, this one's got a lot of colours in it, but you could hopefully on this one you might see it a little clearer on film. You've got all these lovely pity bits and you've got that sort of glass pendant effect on one side. And on the other side, we just have the mica powders. But imagine a die cut, a really nice, um, delicate silhouette die cut placed over the top of this in an aperture. How lovely that would look. And these little pits just set it off really nicely because you're getting different colours come through in these little blobs to what you're seeing in the other pieces. So that's the if you use the thick acetate and we heat it and melt it. And then we also have options for if you just do the thin acetate or the thick acetate and leave it. So this again is the glue technique and then this time I've just done the gold and the green on top of that one. And then this one we have the different reds with the silvers. So that's the candy pink, the scarlet mist, the silver and I believe there's even a little bit of purple violet in there again. Just to give you a little bit of a mix on that one. And then this one is if you don't want to spritz it with water. Instead with this all I've done is applied my glue. I've... Um, dropped on my powders and then instead of spritzing it with water I've just used a paintbrush and brushed the powders over it and it gives you a bit of more of a clumpy effect and a little bit more of a textured effect it's sort of got these nice lines in it from the bristles in the brush so again there's a different way you can use this and you'll see that actually the rest of this sheet used on some of my cards in a moment so hopefully by now you're starting to see there's quite a lot of ways you can use this product. Um, but one of the things I haven't done with it yet that I want to show you is how you can use it to colour your die cuts. So for this I'm just going to take a snowflake die and a flower die. So I can't, I can't be seasonless, can I? So we'll do two at once. You can of course do as many as you want to. And we're just going to spritz over the top of them with water. And then this time I'm going to take a little bit of the purple, shall we? Now don't worry that we've already picked up colours because we're going to be quite messy with these anyway. So we're going to take the purple and like we do with the big sheets, I'm just going to do a base coat of the purple just because I find that then everything sticks to it a little bit better. I'm going to do the same here with the snowflake too. Now although these are done at a thin card, one of the things I did notice quite a lot is when they dry this actually gives it a bit more body and makes the card a little bit harder and um, gives it a bit more structure to it. And now you'll notice I haven't put a piece of card down. That's because I plan on using these powders in a moment. So although this looks like I'm being quite wasteful, I'm going to show you something we can do with all our waste in a moment. So now we've got the gold, and I'm sprinkling on quite a lot of this because I quite like that one. And then we're going to go for the peacock green again. And, oh, that's the one that I struggled with, so we'll get rid of that for the moment. And we'll go on to emerald green, give you a different look with that one. Sprinkle some of that over the top. Again, I'm being a bit more liberal with these. I'm not doing the sort of tap on the end of the bottle bit that you can do if you wish to. Because I know I'm going to use up what I'm taking out of here in a moment. And then when you feel you've got enough, again, we can just spritz them with water and let them react. And now hopefully you can see how all of them colours are pulling together and giving you quite a nice effect. Here's a flower. And again, true blue Peter effect I've already done. That's the same colours left to dry, just left on their own. And one of the things I quite like again is you get a bit of texture with these because of they've got the different stacks of powder left on them, you actually get sort of a different texture to the areas that have got more or less on them. And isn't this lovely? I love these snowflakes. I thought that was a really lovely creation. Of course, you could hang a piece of cord on that and decorate your tree with them if you did them in the right colour if you're starting to think of Christmas. You could of course add a bit of glitter to them afterwards if you wanted to or you could even do two and stick them back to back. There's lots of options for these but that's just again an ordinary die cut done in white card. We'll pop that down over here and let that pour on its own. We'll take the flower off again. As you can see very much similar to this one just wet at this stage but when it dries we'll end up looking like that one.
Now, as I said, I've got quite a bit of mess on my mat, and of course that's cost me money, so I want to do something with it. So another thing I come up with that you could do is take your ribbons. Now, this is just an ordinary gross grain ribbon with a gold edge to it with a wired effect, and all I'm going to do is clean my mat with it. And this will stain the ribbon, and I, would, I wouldn't imagine this is obviously waterproof because they're a water-activated product, and like I said, if you do leave it in your pots, it can still be activated at a later date. So I'm not saying this is permanent, but for cards and scrapbooking, I found this a really lovely effect. And all I'm doing is cleaning off my mat with it. And so nothing's wasted. And if you've got areas that it hasn't quite picked up on, go back and re-get them. But it will dye your ribbon one colour. Now all I'm going to do is tie a bow in this. And because of that's quite a flat blue, I'm now going to add more to the top of it and then spritz it again. So I found it easier if I tie my bows in these as I want them to be seen. Now I don't need all this excess bit, so I'm just going to leave that down there. And again, at this point, you can take your colours. So we're going to take a little bit of the purple and we're just going to spritz this over the top of it. And then because of it, it's got a gold edge to it, I'm going to take a bit of the gold because it's nice to pick up on that too. Now, again, you might be thinking I'm crazy, but I really like these. I thought these looked quite nice when completed. And then because I wanted, when I did my one, I wanted it for a Christmas card. So I added in a little bit of the pinks and the reds too, because I wanted quite a modern effect. So that's a little bit of the candy pink. And we're now going to add some of the scarlet mist to the top of that as well for a bit more of a ready effect. And then again, you can just spritz this and let it all activate. And again, it will go sort of, in clumpy effects in different areas if you're worried about getting the other parts to your bow then you can do it of course doesn't have to be this gross grain ribbon here's one i did earlier just on a piece of satin ribbon and at this point it's starting to match my hands but hopefully you can see it's a nice ribbon effect and of course if you're going to be using the backgrounds that we've been looking at or the flowers for instance it will coordinate really well with those so although it might not be for every project you do in the future it will really match well if you are going to be doing your flowers or your backgrounds. Again, we'll just pop this ribbon knife to one side and let that run for a moment. It will, of course, dry at some point. Again, if you're worried about um, having any waste on your mats, don't be. Because if you have at any point, you can just take a little bit of card and pick up your waste and clean it off. Because of like I said with my ribbons, I was going to clean my mat and I did. But then I remade a mess. So just pick it all up. It's not wasted at all. If you look at this, we've taken another piece of white card and we've now got a nice purple piece going on that when it dries, there will be more colour to it because it'll all dry with the micas. And if you want to, you can, of course, just add a few more bits on the top of it and use it. But just keep picking up the waste. Don't let it be wasted. Use it for your card. Create backgrounds. And again, you may be thinking I'm crazy, but I'll show you on my samples some of the bits I did with just the waste bits I collected as I've gone through my day. So as I say, they can be used. You can create things with them. Now, another thing I wanted to show you with these just quickly is we touched on the fact that they can be used as a paint. So I want to just show you how delicate they can be. So we're going to pop that down. And then over here, I have a little peel-off butterfly that I'm going to take and stick in the middle of my card trying not to get my fingerprints on here because I am at this point getting quite messy. We're now going to just take our normal paintbrush and just a normal small paintbrush and we're going to go back to working as it as a palette. This time we've gone for Aqua Lagoon. We'll bring out a little bit of that one. And again, we'll just apply this with some water. And then you can paint in. Now, one of the bits I like using the peel-offs and especially the black peel-offs is that it gives you an edge that won't be covered by the um, mica powders. If you're going to stamp an image to do this, because of course you could do that instead if you wish to, I'd highly recommend that you heat emboss the image, just simply because of the mica will cover over the top of normal inks, and then you've lost it. So with uh, heat embossing, it will protect it, and you will keep your black edge or your coloured edge, and uh, obviously with a peel off again, it's got them walls to the side of it. So it'll give you that same protection. So your colours don't flood out and your mica won't colour over the top of the peel off. So I won't do too much of that. I just wanted to show you how you could really use it easily and simply as a paint. Then the last little demo I'm going to do for you before we show you the cards is just attacking a flower. So this is 
one of our pre-done, comes in a packet. Yeah, I believe you get eight in a pack, quite inexpensively. But a lot of us have these hidden away somewhere from when we've bought them and never used them. I wanted to show you again how we could use these and colour them. So all I'm going to do again is just spritz with some water and then attack again with my pixie powders. So I'm going to go quite gold on this one, as you can see. And then I really do like the purple. I know a lot of you are purple fans. So we'll add in a bit of purple again, trying to actually get the flower this time. <laughs> and then let's go for a bit of that emerald because we haven't used that one too much, have we? So we'll go in for that too. And then again, all we're going to do is just spritz it. Now, although they are paper flowers and you're probably thinking, oh, that's quite a lot of water for a paper flower. Again, if you just leave them a little while, they will dry on their own. Um, or if you want to, you can heat them with a heat gun and that will speed it up. I really like a lot of gold on mine, so I'm going to just add a little bit more on the top of that one. But it's up to you, obviously. And again, depending on the project you're heading for, again, it's not for everyone's cup of tea. But if you're going to be teaming these up with the backgrounds you've done or the ribbons you've done or um, the acetate bits you can do, then these will match in really well. Again, I have one I've already done. This is just a more lilac-y version of it. And again, you can see in here little hints of red and gold and silver. Again, I've got some of these on my cards I've actually made, so you'll get to see bits of them too. So just to recap, we've done uh, painting with it, we've spritzed with it, we've done all sorts, haven't we? Uh, that is one thing I haven't shown you that you can do, by the way, is if you want to, you can just use an ordinary spritz bottle, pop a bit of the powder into one of those, and it will then become a spritzer of that colour as well. So this one product really does have an awful lot of uses. There's not many products you get that you can turn it into a spritzer, or a background, a paint, um, and still have different effects with it all out of one product for one price. So that's quite a nice little incentive to purchase these. So many times we need separate products, don't we, to do them things with. Well, this time you're getting it all in one. So that's quite a nice little saving to be had there. So we're going to pop this out of the way and we'll get chatting about the cards I've made, shall we? I'll just clean off my hands because I don't want to put too many fingerprints on too many things I'm not meant to. And we'll start off over this side. So this one is showing you that same technique that I did earlier with the acetate and the texture paste. This time we're using the teal texture paste and now you can see it's all dry and set and that's how your little sort of colours will go on top of it. So in there you can hopefully see if I give you a little bit of a wiggle. We've got the emerald green, there's a little bit of the purple violet too. There's also silver dream hidden away in there as well. And then on here we've got lots of die cuts. So we've got our die cut butterflies, swirls and flowers. And between them I've used all of the other colours. Again you can see a lot of gold going on on the flowers. That's just a really nice way to tone it in. And then the ribbon again down the side here started off white. But using the aqua lagoon and the emerald green with a little bit of silver dream. It's given me that nice shine to match in with my texture paste piece in the background. The flower die for this one, if you haven't seen that one before, it's one I use quite a lot. It's one of my favourites. It's only £11.99 and you get quite a few bits in that one. That's this die set down here. And then off to the right, we have our butterfly that you can see. And that's only £5.99. And I've just done two of them and layered them to give us the effect on the front of that one. That's not too bad, is it? It's a nice little effect. Again, lots of techniques on these. Tried to create cards showing you all of the techniques that are on a card. Or of course, if they think that's a bit heavy and you wanted to, you could of course spread these bits out and just use odd bits here and there. Don't have to go quite as wild as I have. Now this card is sort of a modern Christmas card. And I've confessed before, I don't tend to do modern and Christmas together, but I attempted on this one. It's not my favourite, but again, it's got a lot of techniques on it and I wanted to show it to you for that reason. In the background, we have the texture paste for a stencil again. This time I've used the gold, so it's the same as the one we did for our example today. And um, again, we've got a poinsettia down here that I've inked in the same way, using all the different powders. In the middle, I've used that glitter that we've been going on about for the last couple of weeks. I'm sure you've seen it by now, but if you haven't, it comes in five different colours. It's only $3.99, but it makes really nice centres of flowers. So instead of gems, I've been using this quite a lot, especially on larger flowers, because I just apply a big bit of glue gun and then sprinkle the glitter over the top of it. So it sort of makes the centres as big or as small as you want them to be. 
I've then done the same with the snowflakes up here, just spritzed over the top of them and then added on my pixie powders. And the ribbon again is like the one I showed you a moment ago with the gold edge. And again, this one's one that's actually been dried and bowed through the edge of my card. The tealy bit and the gold bit are using our gilding polishes. Now we haven't mentioned them yet today, but I know we've bought hundreds of these, literally hundreds of these over the last couple of weeks. And um, I am very much addicted to them. If you haven't seen us going on and on about them, do have a look back over the last couple of weeks of videos because you'll fall in love with them just as much as I have. But there's just a couple of the colours that have been used for this. And you'll notice that the colours in these uh, gilding polishes mix in really well with the colours in the pixie powders. So it'll work really well. As I wanted more of a Christmas theme, by the way, on my texture paste, you'll see I've used a lot more of the emerald green and the scarlet mist to give me more of a reddy greeny effect. And of course, as I said, although I'm on gold, I've added some more gold in with that too to give me that effect as well. I've left the back of this one open because I wanted to show you on the back as well. If you didn't like the front, the powders will actually penetrate through the colour of your texture paste and give you a different effect on the back of the acetate. So if you wanted more of a smooth effect to it instead of the sort of rough effect on the front you can of course use the back of the acetate and you'll have that sort of two-tone effect anyway so it just gives you a different way to use it moving on we have another one of our cards that we've done acetate with but this time is the pva effect so i've left the back of this one open again so you can see it so this is the pva piece over the top of the acetate and then sprinkled on the pixie powders this time candy pink and rich gold are the main colors in that one and then i've layered a dye over the front of it so that you can see just the odd bits bursting through i've then taken a peel off which is here somewhere that's the one of these um, of course you could stamp on your acetate as well if you wanted to use stays on but i was being lazy so i used some peel offs and stuck them on top of my acetate that i'd created and then cut round it and that's the one i showed you earlier and said how i'd just done it with the glue and i hadn't spritzed it that's the rest of this sheet behind the butterflies so it's more of a concentrated color scheme than the piece on the back less sporadic in where it's gone to give you that style of effect instead and i've just done that for the free butterflies hopefully to tie in with the colours. And then moving on, I'll show you this one. So this time I've gone for a big bit of ribbon because although I've shown you ribbon done for bows and bits, I also wanted to show you that if you've got the wide ribbons like these ones, the double satin wide ribbons, we do lots of different colours and whips of them in store as well. You could of course do the same with them and it gives you just more of a texture and it gives you a bit more of a sheen to them all as well. So it's quite a nice way to make a border for the back of your card which is all I've done. Same again, I've cleared up my mat with it. So that is one I literally cleared up my mat with and then I just sprinkled a little bit more of the powder on to get the more sort of crusty bits of it. Oh, come back you. There's one I didn't quite glue right. And uh, then in the middles of my butterflies, I've just added little rhinestones. The actual butterflies on top are done out of another one of my clean-up sheets. So again, I'm trying to show you here, you really do waste nothing. It's the same as this panel in the background. That's another one of my clean-up sheets. So again, it's it's not wasted. It's just all the little bits left on my, on my mat. I've cleaned up with them and I've managed to use it for the butterflies and that bit. Again, we've got the flowers and the sort of swirl in the middle here using the very much the same colours again. I really like that set. I was really chuffed with these when I made them. It's um, one of them techniques that, or one of them styles that I personally have always looked in at and quite liked things like this, but never felt I'd be able to achieve them to the same level. Well, these powders have made that possible because it really is so simple. Uh, you don't have to panic about how they, you're going to get them and how they're going to work. They're really, really easy to work with. And if I can do it, you can do it. They really aren't a challenge. Moving on to this side. So this time we've got another one of our backgrounds made up. This is another one of the ones on white card that I've painted first. So I've painted that with the Aqua Lagoon. And then on the top we've sprinkled some of the gold I can see and the purple uh, to make up our background. And then on the front here we've got a peel off that I've just painted in again using the powders on the white. Now another thing I wanted to mention at this point is you can also paint on dark card with them as well. So this is a black piece of card and I've painted the same colours as you can see on the white card on the black and you'll see that it just darkens down the effect a little but it still shows up really well and gives you that really nice pearlescent finish. 
So that's another technique you could do as well if you wanted to. Nice simple card that one, not at all complicated and really elegant and easy to do. And then down the front here we have another one of our texture paste for a stencil ones. But this time I've done it on cardstock just to show you don't have to do it on the acetate. So I've done a different stencil, more of an intricate rose stencil on white cardstock. And then done exactly the same, popped my powders on, spritzed it to create this. On the side here we've got another one of my ribbons, I've dyed this one again, started off as white. But it just tones in more with the colours that are going on in the background. And then we have that butterfly dye done again in lots of different colours just to accent it all and hopefully put it together. My last card I'm going to show you is this one. And now on this one we have a very similar effect again, but this time I've used the silver texture paste and then gone over with the, lots of colours. I can see the candy pinks and the purple violets, the golds again, aqua lagoon, emerald green, they're all in there just to do this effect. Again on acetate, I've put black card behind it this time inside my aperture and then sealed it so you can't see it but there's a piece of black card behind it just so the colours hopefully pop at you a little bit more and then again I've used peel offs on a bit more of my gluey acetate to create these and then flowers done in the same way again so really easy to do and then for my last one I'm going to show you today is a completely different project but it's just a letter now I know Christmas is round the corner and I thought it might be nice to show you a different effect or a different project that you could work on with these. So I've used one of our letters that are available in store. These are 429 for the large size. We also do smaller ones, they come in white, and all I've done is painted it to begin with with the Aqua Lagoon. And then on the front of it, I've actually used the pixie powders by just popping them on. And again, in here, you can see the purples, uh, the Aqua La Lagoon, the emerald green, and a little bit of the gold as well. And then I've done them flowers like I showed you a moment ago, and the same with the butterflies and the swirls, and just added a peel off line around it just to set it off. But again, wouldn't that be a really nice present? Or if you were doing a wedding table, maybe, or if you want to do Christmas decorations, you could have Noel or Xmas, something like that. They're quite a nice item to decorate or a nice gift to receive. So again, just a different idea that you could do with them. Hopefully you've enjoyed all this. I've um as you can see, I've got quite messy. I've had great fun creating all these cards for you today. So I hope you've enjoyed them. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. Or if any of the bits I've rambled on about don't make sense, please don't even hesitate to question. I'll happily run through it again for you and explain in a bit more detail maybe. The colours that we use today, obviously, just to show you those once again, we've got our peacock green, our rich gold, our silver dream, purple violet, candy pink, emerald green, aqua lagoon and scarlet mist. Now, all of these normally should be £3.49, but as your Sunday showcase offer this week, they're only £2.99. So don't forget, you've got the eight colours available, £2.99 a bottle. I do feel you're going to want a few of these, so do just let us know what colours you would like if you're going to be having these held for you in store. We can, of course, hold them. Just pop in the comments on YouTube or on Facebook the colours you would like, and we'll have them held for you up until 5pm Saturday. If you wish to order them and have them posted to you, then you can do that via our website. That link will be in the comments, so you can um, just click on that, and you'll find all of these products under the Sunday Showcase tab. We've had a lot of requests this week of if we will send abroad. That is no problem. Uh, we don't cover the postage, obviously, if it's leaving the UK. It's not in our free offer of over £35. But if you do wish to have these products sent to you, we know we get quite a lot of viewers from around the world. That is no problem at all. We literally have parcels going off everywhere this week. So um, don't even question it. Just send us a, a message via our website telling us the items you would like and we will get you a postage quote and then it's up to you if you wish to order it or not. So just get in contact. All of the cards you've seen today will be on our Pinterest page. So if you do wish to pop on there and pin them, you can do. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd ask you please to share it, whether that be on YouTube or Facebook, Twitter, whatever format you're watching us through. We'd really appreciate a share so we can grow our audience. And again, if you have enjoyed today's video, please join our oh sorry, 
please join in with our subscribers. We have over 100 of you now, and we really appreciate the fact you've subscribed to our channel. It means you'll be notified whenever we update a video, and it really shows your support. So please don't hesitate to do that too. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I look forward to seeing you all next Sunday when I have another new product to share with you. Bye for now.